Hey guys, Chris Dalsa here from The Last Checkpoint, bringing you the fourth video in our Unity 3D game beginner series. I want to go ahead and create a more interesting play area for our game. Right now, it's just our square. But because in the last video, how we created a third person camera for our player, we can kind of go anywhere now and not be reliant on where the camera's position is. So in this video, I want to show you guys some tips and tricks on making your play area a little easier on yourselves. So the first thing I want to show you guys, which is actually one of the most powerful things that Unity has, is what's called a prefab. And prefabs are pretty much stencils of game objects that we can reuse over and over again in this project and in other projects. And we can use them over and over again to put the same exact game object onto our scene without having to, one, recreate it. And also, if we want to manipulate all of the objects of that prefab, we can just manipulate the prefab itself and all the objects of that prefab will get updated as well. So I know that was a little confusing, but let's go ahead and use one and you'll see the power of it as we go along. So in the projects folder, we're actually gonna create a new folder. I right clicked, create folder, call it prefabs. And the first prefab we're gonna do is actually one that we've already established in our game, which is the platform. So I think the platform is the perfect place to start. So we'll go ahead and take the platform, drag it into our prefabs folder, and now you can see that there's now a prefab called platform. There's a preview of what it looks like here in the inspector. And when we click on platform, you can see now that there's a prefab row here where we can apply or revert as we need to the prefab. Something that I use quite frequently but I haven't really touched on yet is this little compass here on the top right that shows us the X, Y, and Z axis. And you notice that when I hold right click and move around, that compass will move around with us and show us exactly our exact orientation in relation to the X, Y, and Z axes. But on top of that, it does something even more powerful and even more useful. If we want to view our game from the Y axis, for example, we just click the Y axis. and It'll give us a top-down view as I scroll out. A perfect Y axis top-down view of our game. If we want to view it from the Z axis, hit the Z, X, or the opposite Y axis, the bottom for instance, hit the bottom of the Y. And we're on the bottom and so on and so forth. I think for our purposes, at least to start, a view from the top y-axis works perfectly. It's almost like a mini map. Uh, if we select our player object, we can see on the player object and on the compass, the z-axis facing the way the arrow is facing is the way our camera is facing. So I think that's the way we should build. As good game design denotes that wherever the camera is facing is an encouragement of where the player should go. Just like in a Mario game, he's always facing in the direction where you should initially be going. Let's go ahead and drag the platform under player because there's going to be a couple different platforms here. In order to make our map, I think I want to make a couple more different prefabs to help us build our game. So let's go ahead and duplicate this. Right click, duplicate. Let's call this platform underscore medium. And let's make the size of this one. Well, first let's reset the position to zero, zero, zero. And let's make the scale an X of six. Save that and drag the medium platform into our prefabs. We have a slightly skinnier platform called platform medium. Let's go ahead and create another one. I'm gonna do control D for duplicate on Windows. I think it's command D for Mac, which is the same as right clicking and hitting duplicate. Let's go ahead and rename this platform. Say platform small. It's not really small, but it's slim, but we'll call it small for, for now. Let's go ahead and reset to the origin. And let's make our X scale. Is four too slim? No, let's go ahead and make it two. It's pretty slim, but we can see right here, it's enough for the player object to rest on. Let's go ahead and drag that to prefabs. And now there's one more thing that I want to create. Let's go ahead and create a ramp using this platform. So we'll go control D to duplicate it. And we'll actually look at this from the X axis as it'll be more interesting that way. Let's go ahead and shorten the size of not the X axis, but the Z to five. Well, let's make it a even number, let's go four. And let's make the rotation of the X negative 45, so that's going up. You can already kind of see right here how this is gonna work. It's gonna look a little something like this. Great. 
that the ball will hit it and go up into the next area. Also, the camera is in a great position here uh, because it's just high enough at this position. If we move forward, I'm going to hit play here. If we move forward, that we can't see what's on the next area unless until we go up. It's a little bit of a surprise that way. Go ahead and stop it there. And let's name this prefab, or let's reset it to 000, making sure we have it at our origin. Go ahead and rename this prefab platform underscore ramp. And let's drag that into our prefabs. So I'm going to delete all of them except for just our original platform. But we know that we have them in prefabs whenever we need to use them. So the next thing I want to show you guys is something called snap settings. So let's go ahead and drag a second platform into our game. And we've moved our game objects pretty much by just holding one of the axis or, or one of the faces of the object to move it to move it accordingly. But it's all kind of been freehand. And we can be left in a position kind of like this. X, Y, and Z points with decimals. But if we know that we want to work in whole numbers just to make our lives easier, there's another way to move our objects and that's with snap settings. So let's go ahead and re reposition this back to 000, the same exact position as the other platform. And we'll go to edit, snap settings. And you can see that our snap settings are all set to the value of one for the X, Y, and Z. Now, what does this mean? That on the axis that we want to move on, for instance, this blue one is Z. As we move on the Z axis using the snap settings, we'll move in increments of one, staying as a whole number. So let's go ahead and close this, and you'll see what I mean. To move with snap settings, you go ahead and hold control. And just like before, we'll take the Z axis, move it forward, and you, as you can see in the position, it's incrementing by exactly one with each step. So we can ensure that these are right next to each other because we know that their sizes are in whole numbers. Let's go ahead and view from above on the y-axis. You can see they're exactly aligned. So we'll go ahead and put a couple more platforms out here and I'll go ahead and start creating our level or at least my level. You guys can vary it up if you want as long as you keep it going in the Z direction or in the direction of where the blue arrow is pointing. Let's go ahead and put this at Z20. Let's go ahead and move it on the x-axis or control D to duplicate it. Holding my control key, let's go ahead and move this up. Whole numbers to 30. Go ahead and reset it back to zero on the X. Control D, duplicate. Go up to 40. We went to four, I think, on this one. Went to positive four, so let's go negative four now. Great. And now let's duplicate it once more. Move it up to 50 and back to zero. Perfect, perfect. Okay, let's go back. Now let's go ahead and implement the ramp. So let's go ahead and go to the X, as I think this is the best view, and scroll in for the ramp. And now let's take the ramp, drag it up. Let's go ahead, hold control, move it forward, move it up a little bit, move it forward, zoom in to take a look at how that looks. Great. It's okay if it's a little off on the bottom. That's expected, it won't fit perfectly. As long as we get that upward effect here, I think we're in good shape. Go ahead and take this platform, Control D to duplicate it. Move it forward using the control, move it up. I think that's a pretty good fit, actually. Go ahead and go on the Y axis here. Give ourselves a good look, kind of like a mini map here. I encourage you guys to test your game as much as possible. See if it's interesting. Uh, see if it's even doable at the very start. Of course, you want to start off a little easy. And as your game progresses, make it a little bit more difficult. So we'll go ahead and press play here. See how it looks. So far, so good. Platforms are still big, so it's still relatively easy. Game momentum, and we'll go up the ramp. Great. And we made it. So continuing making our game here. Let's take note that our latest platform is on Y of 2 and Z of 62. Let's drag in our medium platform. Let's do Y of 2 and Z of 62. Cool, so it's in the same exact position as this platform. Move this forward, holding control to 72. And let's move this over 
to be about five. There we go. Control D, duplicate it. Let's move it forward. Another 10, so 82. Let's move this over back to zero. And we'll just have the two for now. And we'll go back to our regular platform. Control D that, move it forward. Great. And now let's go ahead and invoke our smallest ramps. Drag it there. Our previous platform was at 0, 0292. We'll go ahead and highlight this platform, small platform. Make sure it's in 0, 0292. Go ahead and move this forward. Great. That should be a bit more difficult now. Duplicate that. Let's go ahead and rotate another small platform relative to the y axis at 15 degrees. Great. Hold control. Set this way, make sure they overlap, make sure they connect. There we go. Go ahead and duplicate this one. And let's do something a little bit more drastic. Let's do negative 45. Great. Move that up. Still holding control, working in whole numbers. That looks good. And then we'll take the big platform, move it up, and have this kind of be our end state here. Actually, let's do negative eight. Go. Great. So that looks more like a regular game. It starts off easy here, medium here, and then a lot tougher here with the skinnier platform. As always, hit play to play test. We'll try it out. Move up the ramp. Good. Slows down a bit. A little tougher, but not too tough. Great. And now we're on the skinny platforms where we need a little bit more finesse. And we made it to our end state. Perfect. Go ahead and press play. So your game doesn't have to look exactly like mine. In fact, it'll be a little bit more interesting for yourself to put your own twist on it. We have a bunch of prefabs here for you guys to work with. Um, and you guys have seen that even the slightest rotations in relation to the y-axis and then for the ramp in relation to the x-axis will give us some very interesting results. We can go up, we can go down, we can go sideways. And so yeah, if your game doesn't look exactly like mine, not a problem. But as long as you can get from the beginning state to the end state, you guys will be in good shape. So one more thing I want to show you guys. I want to introduce you guys to what's called a parent-child relationship in this hierarchy view. So if you click, if you right click, create an empty object, rename that object to, let's call this game board. Make sure that the game board is reset to the origin. Then we take our first platform, hold shift, select our last platform, left click it. You select all of them there and you can drag them onto your game board. Now you have an organized list of all your platforms underneath a game object called game board. So now we can highlight game board and you can see that all of our platforms are selected. And if we're no longer working with the platforms and this is kind of obstructing our view, you can go ahead and collapse it. So guys, that's it for this video. For the next video, I wanna look at putting down some collectibles on our map. If you guys remember from our preview video, as our player was moving throughout the map, there were little green gems on the ground that the player can pick up which would accumulate as the game's point system. For the next video, I want to do the first part where we set up the collectibles on the map and show how we can make them disappear once, once we hit them using colliders. So guys, as always, if you liked the video, please hit the thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel and leave your comments below, and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks guys for watching.